Hey guys, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome and welcome back. If you have, my intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. I'm just waking up. Um, I wanted to share, I just want to go into a little flow. Um, I did a video yesterday, if you feel guided to watch it. I've done a lot of videos lately. I've had the, the blessing. I've been making more time um, to really focus on these videos because um, there's so much information coming in that I just like to share it with you guys and it's fun for me and some people find it helpful um, so I, I'm doing as many as I can and I really could probably do like five videos a day right now because of all the energies that are coming in but of course time wise we all have other responsibilities and things that um, we have to focus on as well in our um, you know, daily lives. And I wanted to talk about that a little bit because many of us are finding our schedules changing for whatever reason. For me, um, it's just all over the board right now. It used to be like at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I would just be ready. Um, and it could be because, you know, at the time I was teaching a lot of Pilates and yoga. And so I would get home at that time and focus on my sessions and my videos. So maybe I was in the habit of sitting down at that time telling um, spirit, okay, I'm ready to work. Although throughout the day, I would also receive downloads and messages, but as I was teaching a class, it was difficult to just you know stop the class and then go write it down. So many of us are feeling that way um, as parents, at regular jobs, you know, grocery shopping, whatever it is that we've got going on in our lives. And sometimes it can seem overwhelming when we're doing all of that and all of these downloads are coming in or all of these um, energies. And so that can come in the form of, um, dare I say the words, ascension symptoms. I know we've talked about that so much, but it's still relevant for a lot of people. Um, myself included, when I have, am having a day where I'm really in my logical left brain analyzing things and not balancing things out, what happens is, is I physically suffer and suffers the wrong word, but I'm using that as an example. I physically feel drained. And sometimes that physical feeling of being drained isn't because I'm overanalyzing, isn't because I'm being logical and I'm not in my heart. It could just be that I just physically have a lot going on and it's time to just take a nap, sit in the sun, go take a bath, do whatever we need to do in order, in order to, the word that's coming through is harness these energies and not deflect these energies. Because at times they can feel, I always talk about, um, have you ever seen those movies where somebody like, um, it, you know, it's like being on a roller coaster where you're, or being on a gravity, a gravity ride where you're like pushed up against the wall and your cheeks are smushed back against your face. And it's like, okay, hold on. Adjustments are being made. And it can sometimes feel like that. A lot of pressure in the head. Um, sometimes, and what's important about all of this is sometimes just stopping to recognize that's what's going on heart flutters, feeling um, just itchy. Um, my mom's been asking me lately, do you ever feel like somebody's tickling you or there's a hair on you, but there's, but there's nothing there? Yes. <laughs> it feels like these little nerve tingles sometimes. And it can feel when we're not um, stop recognizing. I'm hearing stop and drop in. I always use that stop, that song stop, drop, set them down, shop, whoa. I never know the lyrics to songs, I make my own up. But anyways, stop, drop, in, settle in, and see what's really going on. Just for a second, it can just take a minute to take a breath. Wow, I'm feeling a lot of anxiety right now. Oh, wait a minute, that's not anxiety. It's some kind of pressure that I'm feeling in my head that I'm interpreting as anxiety. And then what's happening is I'm then reacting from that thought of I have anxiety. So we're really being invited to kind of redirect our energy inward and literally into our bodies. Now, that when we do that, it does help us to drop in deeper into our hearts. And we can use what we have as a tool to help to synchronize. And this is a play on words, obviously to pull in synchronicities, but to sync up, to synchronize 
with our inner intelligence. So the video I did yesterday was a lot about the heart. And I really went into the symbology of the heart and the body, inner to outer, to our um, what's happening right now in our reality. And this can be applicable to any time, but it's really applicable to right now because we are going through a lot as we all know, meaning we're going through a lot. So we're passengers in a vessel. We're passengers and witnesses and observers to this old reality crumbling around us and trying sometimes to suck us in with it. And so it takes, um, uh, it takes being aware. It takes awareness to navigate responsibly. And this is the message that keeps coming through. And I want to just share responsibility sounds like this very stout word where it feels like we have to put on some armor and respond. But that isn't what my guidance team talks about responsibility being. It's more about our ability to respond to what we are witnessing, how we are witnessing it, how we feel when we see it. When there is something that shows up right in front of us in our lives, how are we able to then respond to the, the um, navigation? Are we in control of our navigation? Do we recognize when we're not? Are we able to rein it back in and make the adjustments that we need in order to be more aware of what could be in front of us, if that makes sense? So it's like, Sometimes things just surprise us because that's the way life works sometimes. And sometimes things surprise us because we're not being present or aware of some of the things that are unfolding. Many of us have this ability right now to recognize, um, to recognize some of the things that are coming up, some of the things that might be showing up for us. This could be a possibility. But again, it's taking responsibility and not our ability to not get sucked up into that possibility is another thing that was coming through. So I really had fun with that video. So I invite you guys to watch it if you feel guided. It's kind of, I kind of nerded out, but I did some light language and some, anyways, talking about the heart. And it was just fascinating um, the more I learn about this. Uh, what else is coming up? Oh, so our schedules might be changing. We're being invited right now. My guidance team keeps saying it's temporary. Unless I don't want it to be. I can eventually kind of do what I did before where it was like at three o'clock, I'd get my downloads or I'd be able to focus. Or when I was driving, I did a lot of car videos because I would get a lot of my downloads um, while I was driving. And that still happens. Um, there were just some reasons I was unable to do them recently. But my point is it's shifted. So now it's like right when I wake up. So I have to like scurry to write this down Sometimes I can just say, all right, stop. And I use symbols. Um, my, my friend Sid taught me this. Love you, Sid. Um, years ago, she said, spirit speaks in symbols. And I've used that a lot. For me, spirit speaks through all things. But it, it's, it can be very useful when I was trying to figure out what messages would, were coming through and I was having difficulty, I would sit Again, being present, sit with myself and just take a breath and visualize. I visualize myself at a, at a um, I'll just share this vision with you guys. You guys use whatever works for you. This is just what I did. Um, because we have so many pictures that are being thrown at us from all things. And we create so many pictures in our mind, our mind's eye, um, that sometimes it's difficult to um, differentiate the pictures that are coming from our thought patterns, the other people's realities that, that are being spewed at us, and also then our higher selves. So I visualized myself with a watch on, at, with a journal, sitting in a desk like a school student, and I was in the dark. And I visualized, I shined a light on my journal because at the time I was really wanting to write. And this is when I was getting all of these downloads through writing. And I was tapping my watch and looking up. In my mind's eye, I, I visualized that. And that was a way for me to communicate with Source and my guides in a very, okay, I'm ready. I'm sitting down, I've got my notebook open, I'm waiting. 
I'm ready. You guys do whatever picture comes to you. It might be jumping in a, a, a ocean, lying on your backs and receiving sun codes. I mean, there's so many different ways to play. I'm getting goosebumps on that one. That also, by the way, sidebar is something that many of us, it's a high energy day. You guys, I know I kind of do this and um, I share these on the videos, but that's just me. I mean, I'm not the same every day. I'm not this, you know, staunch, stay neutral um, in that old fashioned way and only respond this way. And some people have that. I like to kind of play with the energies in different ways. Sometimes uh, I'm guided to be in the water just laying on my back, receiving codes, receiving sun codes, opening to receive those codes, and then just visualizing and setting, what that does also is it sets our intention, right? So now I'm showing my guides, I'm showing me, my inner source connection. I'm ready to receive. This might take, this took me doing it every day, throughout the day, and I had to not give up because um, I didn't have to. I could have totally given up. But it was kind of like I would get frustrated at times because I didn't think it was working. But then all of a sudden, when I became a little bit more aware of how I was feeling in my body, those little tingles, I would recognize, for example, huh, something's going on because I'm getting these little like something, something was tickling my energy field, like, hello, pay attention, something's happening, right? Something's shifting. And then as soon as I do, did that, little things would start to show up for me that were there the whole time that I never would have paid attention to had I have not tuned in, set my intention, made a visualization, and then been open to receive and not shut down by being frustrated because I didn't think analytically that I wasn't receiving. And so for me personally, and if you've watched these, this, is, this will be old news, but sometimes it's just a good reminder. I would get them through conversation. I would be driving. It's okay, buddy. I would be driving um, and then get the codes that way. Um, driver's license, stickers on cars um, were big for me because I was in the car so much. Sometimes I'll just get in the car and drive because if I'm feeling stuck, because there's just something about being able to see new scenery that sometimes shows you there's things outside of our box or our bubble that are also here and available to, sh to help us. Um, this can be synchronicities and visualizations through the computer as well and through our phone. But recognizing that, that if we're in this habit pattern of only thinking, then some of the things are gonna show up for us that um, I think Bartzis, Andrew Bartzis refers to as, and I love this, um, false synchronicities. Because they're giving us more of what we are looking for. Right. So be aware. I'm being I'm in just flow right now. So I thought I was going to go into some light language. I always do this. Um, be aware of what we're asking for. Be aware of what we're visualizing. Be aware of what it is that we're tuning into, because oftentimes we'll get more feedback about what it is we're focusing on. Right. So oftentimes we'll get more visualization and focus about um, some of the things that we don't realize we don't want them or we don't want to focus on them, but we get lost sometimes in that. And that will get us stuck in that loophole that I've been talking about in my last like five videos. And it'll create these patterns. It gives us more of that. It could be about going down the rabbit hole. It could be conspiracy stuff. It doesn't matter. Um, it is about us finding that, wait a minute, that might be true and that might be, but is that really for me? Is that what I need to know right now? Because there's a lot of us that are finding ourselves and we're not recognizing there's more. And this is the message that keeps coming up over and over again. There's more to this. So what is it that we're missing about ourselves? Not about what we're learning about what's going on in the world, not about what we're um, having to experience at work. That's a big part of it, but it's, it can't be the only thing we're focusing on. It can be if we choose for it to be, but if we're only focusing on that, then we're not allowing ourselves to receive the codes and activations that many of us 
really could use or that really want to find, to receive. And then what happens is we go into unconscious resistance. And we know what resist persists. So it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And we resist more and more and more. And then we end up sick, um, really in a place of, uh, I'm hearing self-destruction. Things have to break down for many people because of this resistance in our lives, in our bodies, in our relationships, before we can really open and let go to let the floodgates, we have to like let everything flood us before we can, okay, I'm ready, right? It's that, it's that um, you know, I bring up my relationship with COVID. It really broke down my system. I chose to experience that. I, I do know in my heart for many different reasons. And I'm grateful for that experience because it helped me to understand so much about our experience as a collective. It helped me to understand my body more. It helped me to understand my relationship with my, my family on a deeper level. So for me, it was a gift, even though it didn't feel good in so many ways, <laughs> physically, mentally, emotionally. But it really did give me this, I came out from it seeing things from a different perspective. And so I'm grateful for that. But sometimes, and then four or five years ago, when I went through my massive surge, um, spontaneous kundalini activation, pineal gland cracking open, everything flooding my senses, it caused me, I had to work through my fear. It's like I didn't have a choice. I gave myself no choice because I literally painted myself into a corner. And I'm being guided, that is what I'm being shown. People have painted themselves into this corner that they think that there's only one way out. And yeah, the only way out is by going within. And sometimes we're in such resistance that that only way we can do that is when we're knocked onto our butts, we have to lay down and we have to sleep. But that doesn't always mean we're in resistance. Sometimes it's just our body saying, all right, this is what we need, right? This is what we need right now. Okay, um, a lot, where do I go with this? I could go into so many different realms. So ascension symptoms is still relevant. And I'm really being invited to guide everybody that don't beat yourself up if you're having them. It's okay, recognize that it's first recognizing that maybe what you're feeling is something bigger, meaning it may not be because um, it's like get out of judgment, right? And um, sometimes we get into the space of like, oh, I thought I was over this five years ago. Yeah, you were until you weren't. <laughs> Acceptance. So obviously it's showing up. How can I best support myself during this time? Because, or what do I need to support myself during this time? So again, I always talk about this. For me, it's getting back to the basics, which can seem boring for some of us, especially for some of us that are in that space where we are excited and we want to keep moving forward, but we've just, we're just too tired to do it. And we then beat ourselves up and be like, well, I can't get this done if I'm not physically able to respond. And no, you can't. You can, but you're only, what I keep hearing is half-assing it, right? It's like you're only, and I hear that's a play on words. If we're half-assing it, it's the, I'm hearing the donkey. Oh, which is so funny. I'm thinking of Holly. She was talking about the donkey collective coming forward the other day. Ah, uh, another example of synchronicity. And I was like, the donkey collective? I didn't even really think about that existing, but there is a collective of donkeys. And now I'm seeing what is half-assing it. It's being stubborn. So thank you, Holly. It's being stubborn and um, not recognizing. It's like, I'm staying on this path. You cannot steer me off of this path. But I'm also seeing this as a big play on words because it brings me into, and as I share this with you guys, I'm sharing how my synchronicities show up for me and how I interpret them. Because I'm not just here to tell you what I'm seeing energetically. It's to share with you guys how to play from my perspective 
with our guides, with our higher selves, with the universe and how it communicates through all things, inner to outer, outer to inner. So I'm seeing Pinocchio. So what are we lying to ourselves about, right? What is it that we've, um, you know, we've basically been in this situation. How do we get out of this position? And it's by being honest. It's by being, bringing us the truth, right? What is showing up for us that is telling us you're not really being honest with yourself because you're tired. And sometimes we have to power through. We've got kids, we've got um, a job, we've got this. You might have to take a sick day and not feel guilty about it. It might be you need to, to um, step outside on your break rather than lunch with your friends. It might be you have to skip happy hour and go home and just zonk out. And those are, that's being honest. That's being truthful with yourself and not resisting what the messages are that are coming in. A lot of people get, um, ask me in session, well, what are the messages? What messages am I not receiving? And you have to, you don't have to, I say that, but again, that's a limiting word, but we're being invited to. I love using that instead. We are being invited to. Are you gonna play or are you gonna resist? Sometimes that resistance, the energies build up so much that again, we have to break down. And I use the example in my Corvid video, I was humbled. And being humble isn't being meek because I had to be strong from one perspective in order to power through and open to what I was being shown. Because if I resisted it and was in a place of fear and anger, I wouldn't have seen the bigger picture. So that's kind of what's going on right now. It's like, let's be honest with ourselves, our bodies, and say, and we can say, no, I can't, I'm sorry I have to cancel today. I really have to just figure out what's going on in my body. And it's okay to do that. Or it, we just might not feel like it. Some of us um, force ourselves to do things and it can be better for us at the other end, like going for a walk or, um, you know, sometimes we know in our hearts though that we need something else. So this is about us getting to know ourselves a little bit. It's about us remembering that comes first because then we're half-assing it in that conversation. Let's say we agreed to have lunch with a friend. We really aren't in the right vibration. We're not feeling good. And all they're doing is talking about their problems. And we realize in that moment, I don't have the space within myself. And I'm referring back to my video yesterday, the heart space, it's a thing. We're compressed, we're compacted, we're feeling all of the stuff that we haven't processed. And here we are showing up for somebody else who obviously isn't, they might need a friend and that's okay. The timing isn't right though. Whereas before, if we were in the right energy, we would realize they aren't complaining. They just want to feedback or they really aren't, they just need something different that we're not able to see because we're so wrapped up, tightened and condensed in our own, um, so we're split, right? We're not coherent. We're being stubborn. We're not admitting the truth that this isn't a good day for this. So um, that's something to recognize too. And this can go on the other end of the spectrum. We can be on the other end of the spectrum and hermit, shut down, go into apathy, go into anger and resentment and just not want to talk to anybody. And that can be work against us as well. So it is about us finding that balance but we can't find the balance until we recognize our own inner conversation. Hey, I need this. Um, so everybody's got a different way of doing this. There is no set standard. We, I used to teach in my videos um, and sessions as well um, to connect. One of the ways I connected and got answers, yes and no answers, was pendulum. I never really taught the pendulum too much, but I did use it from time to time. But I found, and my friend Kat reminded me of this the other day in conversation, I found that it showed me what I really thought. That doesn't mean that was necessarily the right answer. <laughs> it, it would show me sometimes what I believed. What I believed, truly what I believed, 
would show up for me, but it wasn't necessarily in the linear aspect what was really going on. So even the yeses and nos in the body, um, you can do muscle testing. You know, sometimes I'll hold on to something and if I lean forward in the store, my body wants it. And if I lean back, I don't want it. That's when I'm stuck. Like, I just cannot figure this out today. Body, help me out. And, and that'll be, or I'll get, I'll ask, I'll hold on to something or I'll put my hand over it and my heart will expand or I'll feel like I'm getting taller or I'll feel like I'm expanding out if it's a yes or I get a contraction in my gut if it's a no or I feel like something's press, pressing on my shoulders. Me. My bubble within a bubble within a bubble is communicating back with me and giving me signals that I can then be aware of to kind of guide me when I'm really stuck in my head. But sometimes it's just fun to play with too. But from a bigger perspective, those are basic ways. Other ways are we just have an inner knowing. We just sometimes have to trust. And we, we can't follow our inner knowing if we're not used to trusting ourselves. And we, we um, may make then what we consider mistakes. And, some, and that's okay. Sometimes our higher selves tell us something because we want that to be the answer. And that is our higher self that is essentially, um, we do have variations of, we're still, we can still be polarized into something, if that makes sense. Sometimes that's our ego that we're misinterpreting as our higher selves. Also, sometimes that's a, an aspect that needs to be healed within us. So it's giving us this answer for us to then make the mistake. And I know this sounds kind of like, what? Crazy, but I've had this happen. So I'm sharing because I feel like it might be relevant for certain people. We get this big answer that's a yes, and so we follow it, and then all of a sudden it shows up in our face or it comes back to bite us. That's not the answer. But I've been guided to share, and I've seen it in my own life, that we needed to have that false yes, false synchronicity, show up for us in order to show us what did we learn from that experience that seemed like it was a mistake. Well, we need to use more discernment as to how we're communicating with ourselves. And maybe we need to have that experience to help shut down part of this need to have that experience. And there's so many different directions we could go with that. So again, it's stepping out of judgment and not getting angry with ourselves. It's like, okay, I made that mistake, but in reality, there were so many gifts that came out of it. So was it a mistake? No. Um, and so that's something else to recognize as well. And so the more we practice this, then the clearer and more concise the answers, the synchronicities, the guidance becomes, and we have this trust. Some of us have done things and then we, we, we don't trust ourselves because we made those choices. But first of all, those energies or choices and decisions were made before. They were made when we were a different person. They were made when we were nesting in a different energy. Everything has shifted, even from six months ago. So now we're being invited to trust ourselves, especially if we are connected to our heart. And I'm being guided to talk more about that, and I might run out of time. But there's this concept that being connected to our heart is connected to our emotions. So we're taught in movies, oh, it's sunshine and rainbows, and if it feels like love, it is. But if we are not, if we haven't honed in on what love really is, as an example, we're gonna make a choice based on what our belief is around what love is, when in actuality, everything was screaming at us on the other end, don't jump into that relationship. That isn't healthy for us. That person isn't really our soulmate. <laughs> we just think or believe that they are because they're offering in our mind or vibrationally something that is, um, can be utilized to grow from or to learn from or it's triggering within us a response that's chemical based on a habit pattern of being um, whatever that might be. Or it could be that this person's just giving us attention and it feels good. And because it feels good, we then think that that is what love or bliss or 
true partnership really is all about. But there are many things that can give us that temporary, temporal um, high. So this is a whole other category, but I feel this is important for people right now because this can go for jobs, it can go with relationships, it could go with people that we're watching on the internet. We can't be searching for a high that someone else is giving us constantly. We have to look within. And it, um, I'm hearing codependency is something that's, that a lot of people are struggling with right now. So that might be a video I could talk about in another time. So it's again being dependent on this feedback system that we're we're um, searching for because we haven't quite made the connection. There's some kind of disconnect somewhere, or a lesson that we can we, we can be learned can be learned from that experience of believing that. Ah, so many things. Okay, I know I just blasted you guys. Um, yeah, now I'm I'm recognizing why my guidance team has been guiding me away from coffee. Speaking of which, I haven't been wanting coffee. I've literally been um, starting to kind of cut it out little bits at a time. So I'm down to like a quarter of a cup right now. And um, I'm recognizing that the energies are very high and low right now. So sometimes if I'm really tired, I'm, I'm turning to green tea right now. Anyways, changing diets is happening. All right, I'm running out of time. So I'm gonna end on that note. <laughs> In loving light, guys. Thank you so much. Um, it's challenging at times. I've got a lot of I'm busy, but I'm going to go dance around the house today in between sessions to just keep my charge flowing. I'm going to go step outside in between sessions and just reconnect with breathing so that we don't get drawn into everybody else's stories and everybody else's energies. And that helps us to show up, not half-assing it, right? In love and light, guys. Um, Namaste. You guys rock. <laughs> Talk to you later.